What's the perfect combination of Western medicine, fitness, and nutrition? Watch this. Our first caller is Grayson from Oklahoma. Grayson, what's happening? Uh, I am a currently a junior in college. Um, I'm a biology pre-med student. I've pretty much just grown up with, you know, wanting to be a doctor and everything like that. But um, as I've gotten older, especially, I've really just like my passion is in health and fitness. You know, that's what I'm really interested in. And so I want to do something, you know, that's health and wellness related. Um, and I, I, I haven't seen a ton of doctors that have really created a practice that is, you know, kind of interconnects the fitness and the medicine industry. And so I really just wanted to come to talk to you guys, since I know you guys have such an extensive knowledge of the fitness industry as a whole and see, you know, if you guys know, or have been around uh, physicians, um, or anyone in the medical field that's kind of, you know, intertwined the medical and the fitness industry. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And uh, thank you, by the way, for your interest. I think this is a great combination when you have the expertise of Western medicine, combine it with, you know, fitness training and nutrition type coaching. Now, here's the the challenge with what you're asking. And I know you're asking, do I know anybody like that? You know, off the top of my my head, not necessarily, but here's the challenge, and I'm sure you know this better than anybody. When you're trying to become a specialist in Western medicine, like you don't have time to also simultaneously become a specialist uh, and gain the experience that's required to be really good at training and coaching people. It's really hard to do all by yourself. So what I would do in your shoes is this, and I've thought about this a lot in the past. In fact, this was actually something I even thought about doing at one point, which is when you figure out what your specialty is, do that, and then you can get your own office. And then within that office, I would have a space for correctional exercise with trainers and with people who can coach nutrition. And when people come in, they'll see you as the specialist, but then they can work through coaching with nutrition and they can work with exercise specialists within your facility. I think that would be so valuable. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that that's the future of a lot of medicine. I think it's it's going to be a combination of those things. Oh, yeah. I worked at a – well, I didn't work. I did like an internship uh, when I was in college at this place in Condell Medical Center. Uh, right across the street from there was this amazing gym that had uh, physicians on hand. It had personal trainers, physical therapists, uh, you know, you name it. Everything was sort of in-house. And uh, it was great because they all communicated with each other and were able to, you know, blend um, the, the programming and everything to fit and tailor that specific client uh, amazingly. So I think that there's I would love to see more of that kind of synergy amongst everybody's professions uh, working together like that. Well, I think that's the I think that's the answer is you're more likely to partner up with somebody who's like the, the, if you're going to, you go the doctor route and then you partner up with the fitness expert or you go the, the fitness route, like, uh -huh. yeah, and then you find a doctor that aligns with your values and you partner with the doctor. Um, and I think not to say that you can't do both. I just think that if you go through all the work and effort to become a, a, a doctor, uh, the, the money side of the fitness side is not going to be very appealing. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, uh, I can see patients, uh, and practice Western medicine and I get paid this much. Uh, if I spend any time over here on this kind of training clients, personal trainer side, I'm not making shit compared to that. So that, I think that would be the, the challenge that you would probably, uh, run into if you were trying to kind of live in both worlds. You know, the only person who comes to mind, uh, uh Stephen Cabral, kind of like this yeah I mean, he's a uh, functional medicine right? yeah he's got yeah. both he's got yeah. he's got western and eastern medicine yeah. that's what makes him kind of mm -hmm. unique which uh, I, but still primarily a doctor not really personal training or recommending i mean he does a lot of stuff in nutrition yeah um but not really recommending that i mean that that would be my recommendation is to is to work on being a specialist uh, specifically in one of those areas and then trying to align yourself with another specialist in the opposite. And, 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 and because you have a passion for both, you'll have probably a good idea of what a, a good trainer looks like, right? You would look, you, you would align your values well with that versus your, your traditional doctor oh, that yeah. maybe doesn't care and, as much. Well, or yeah, and, a, and if you stay the medical side, you could get sports medicine experts and you can get physical therapists who also have some specialization in uh, other forms of exercise because physical therapists are the best for correctional exercise. But then you want to also understand progressive overload and that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of PTs that also know that as well. 
So it's a it's a medical facility, even covered by insurance, that kind of incorporates all of these things. I really do see this being the future yeah. of medicine in a lot of different ways. So you're 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 headed in the right direction, uh, completely, Grayson. Well, thank you guys. I I, I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, the other thing that you know I was you know kind of interested and in, I've kind of been looking at is the physical therapy route, uh, just because I know you guys mentioned um, the other day that you know part of kind of the disconnect between an MD and, uh, you know, the patients and everything when they're trying to give health and wellness advice and stuff like that is they're not with them every day. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe, you know, I'm, you know, if I went the physical therapy route, I could get that, you know, maybe three day a week connection with a, with a patient um, where you could have maybe more of an impact. And so that's kind of just what I'm trying to decide at this point. Cause I, I do, I, you know, I love that part of, um, you know, the, and like, I just love the fitness industry so much. And I'm like, man, if I want to do what I love, maybe that's more of a route. Yeah. So just kind of figuring it out. You know, at, at, at 20 years old, you're, it's a great, great age to be at, to be asking these types of questions. And, and probably uh, some of the best advice could be too, is just to uh, go, go dabble in a little bit of all of it and see what you find yourself most passionate about. What, what is it that you stay up at night reading and, and learning about when you're not getting paid and you don't have to study for a test, mm-hmm. but just because you're interested in it and let that drive uh, your decision on where, what direction maybe you, you should go as far as a career, you know, and, 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 play with everything. I mean, I feel, I feel like at this age, it's a good time to, to try all these ideas that you have out and just see which one you naturally kind of fall into based off of what you're spending time doing when you're not being told to or yeah. getting paid to. There, there's a lot of directions you can go. I mean, you can even go the direction of orthopedic surgeon and then in your facility work with physical therapists and trainers and people who work nutrition. I mean, there's so many ways to complement Mm-hmm. all these different fields. Um, and if you're the medical mm-hmm. expert, it's your it's your facility. I mean, I I, I tried doing this with, uh, with doctor clients of mine, not necessarily creating a business together, but I created a network of people I'd refer to. So if I had somebody who had, you know, uh, gastro issues, or I had a, a, a gastro specialist I would send people to. I had a two, couple general surgeons that I could refer to if there were some issues. And I had some therapists that I would refer to. So I could, I could see there's so much potential here um, but I think Adam's uh, hitting the nail on the head. Like, do the for you specifically, do the one that you feel most passionate about because you'll be the best at that. Um, and then you can supplement and complement with that with other people helping you in that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Excellent. for sure. All right, perfect. Thanks for calling. Hey, well, thank you guys for having me on. You guys are awesome. No you guys problem. Are big time. Thank you, Grace. Yes, you. no problem. Yeah, my best success, hands down, period, with clients was when people worked with me. And they worked with you know one or two other specialists that were experts at things that I was not. Um, I had people work with me, and then massage therapists and physical therapists, or with me and you know people who were experts in nutrition or with hormones. And it was wonderful because what I would do is I would uh, create these these uh, these email threads where we would all work together. Yeah. And sometimes they would say to me, "Hey Sal, I don't think you should be doing." squats with this person because I'm noticing an issue here with the knee or whatever. And then I would say, well, what about this particular issue with mobility? And say, well, you know, that's a good idea. And we would go back and forth and construct like the best uh, yeah. combination of, of therapies. And the success rate was tremendous. Well, it, just, it just seems that that's the most likely scenario, right? Is to, to, to get together with other specialists and then create some sort of versus what I got he was asking at the beginning, which is more like what he could do all of it. I just don't see... I don't see you being. I don't know any, any yeah, some hybrid of that. Yeah, just like, I don't know any doctors that went through all the schooling to become a doctor and then thought, oh, I'm gonna also I'm gonna go do ten years I, of personal. Training. Yeah, I'm gonna go do personal training. And I, I mean, what's your what's your guys' guess on why that is? I mean, mine is just the money, right? It's, it's just the like, money and the time. Yeah, dude. you put all that time and effort into getting your PhD, and the at least you're make, making a pretty good income. You if go you to did that. You, you go to school. First of all, you have to crush in college. Then you go to medical school. You got to crush right. there. Then you got to do an internship. You got to crush there. The whole time it's bell to bell, uh, very stressful, very challenging. Then you get to start to practice medicine and you 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 now need to build experience as a doctor. You're going to go and, and become experienced as a trainer for another five to 10 years. Like I guess by the time you're 50, you might be ready, you know, but that's a, that's a lot. You know, I think, and I also don't think you'll be as good 
as you being the expert on one thing, that's right, and mm-hmm. then working with having other people work with you. The neat part though is if he has a passion for both, he'll have a good eye for who to hundred yeah. percent. Just you know, what I'm saying so he'll have a good eye for what to look for in the trainer or the PTs or the other the other practices right to align himself with. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.